In WJCT's Voices of the River series, we take a journey down the St. John's River and hear from people who depend on the river for their living or whose lives are changed because they live close to it. In this first installment, we hear from a fourth-generation commercial fisher, Anita Johnson. She lives in the New Berlin area of Jacksonville. This was not a community. This was a family neighborhood. It was always something going on from one end of the, end of the road to the other. I mean, we just had, there was life and, and excitement. And, and I remember when, when, when the boats, they used to come in through the channel, around the channel, it was a lighthouse out there, on the, um, out on the corner. And, and when those boats came around that corner, the neighborhood would light, light up. The Annie M, here comes the Annie M, here comes the Christopher, here comes the Shenandoah. I mean, it was always, it was just, just to meet the boats, to see what they caught, to see, you know, everybody would come out to the patio to see what we caught. You know, it, it was excitement just to see how many fish you had, you know, what kind of fish, uh, can I get a mess for dinner? You know, it was always something. Every family just about had a trawler, but everybody had a boat. So there was always traffic in the river. But you're not allowed in the river now because of the shipping industry. They will run over you. When they took away the fishing industry and people had to go elsewhere for employment, the community died. The gill netters were the ones that fed the populace. They caught, they caught the fish that are known as finfish. These were the inexpensive fish that black consumers used on a regular basis. They were part of the main diet in the black community because they were the least expensive. So there have been people that had to cut seafood out of their diets because of the price. Yeah, everybody's old now. Cause we don't we don't get out like we used to when it was plentiful and available. We don't we don't get out and share. Now if you go buy a fish and you paying seven, eight dollars a pound, <laughs> the neighbors not gonna know, okay? <laughs> when they were when they were inexpensive or free, everybody could eat. But I am we are paying fifteen dollars for a dozen of crabs. Who you think gonna get some? <laughs> and, the, and the children used to have. Now we used to get out on my mama's dock and drop a, a fish or a piece of chicken on a string and just pull them up and then. Well, the old people used to say you have salt in your blood. Right. It's the salt, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's the salt. Yeah. It's a, a, a fishing being out there in the universe. Um, it's it's addictive. I mean, it was it's hard work. But it's the most fun you could have. I loved being out in the middle of the river, away from all humans, looking up at the sky, communicating with God, and hearing the water lap up against the side of the boat. There's nothing more tranquil, more peaceful, or more natural than being out in that water with God and peace. That was retired Fisher Anita Johnson in an interview recorded at her Jacksonville home. This segment was produced by WJCT's Mary McIntyre from an interview recorded by the Florida Department of State. Our next Voices of the River segment takes us about nine miles up the river to Panama Park, just north of downtown Jacksonville. Here we'll meet Bruce Nipper and Robin Emmett, who goes by the name Dude. Nipper runs a market called Trout River Fish Company. 7.30 left the dock, basically. Pulled the first trap about 10 minutes after that. And I love morning. It's peaceful. It is peaceful. Calm days, it's a mirror. Everything above you you see, it's, it's, it's picture perfect. And I'll fill in what he forgot to tell you. You don't have the general public messing with you. It's, it's, it's peace. a peace. It's That's peace. what he means by peaceful. It's, you don't have the general public and people some yeah. some days you know the river's got a lot of activity. Other days you you're there alone. It's 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 peace and quiet. Only noise you have you got old seagulls walking every now and then. That's the only quiet time you get. You're surrounded by people the rest of the week and you know, the rest of the day. We see a bunch of faces in here every day, so yeah. that that time alone's nice. I miss the time that we had just just dragging, seeing what you had, and miss the time out there just being on that water. It's so much quieter and so much less hassle dealing with just on the back of a shrimp boat than it is dealing with the general public and 
and fellow employees and everything else. You know, the general public can be a real pain. They can be really picky. And, uh, and some of them can be great. We have some days when it's just phenomenally how great all the customers are. But I'm, I miss being out on that river. And if it was a continuous guaranteed living, I'd rather be on that river starting tomorrow than be inside this building. Yeah. It becomes an addiction. It, it truly does. Yeah. It, it's, it's definitely fun. Yeah. It's, it's a good, it's a good, good life. I'm 50 now, and I can't remember not being on a boat. <laughs> I, I'm, I can't remember from, not being from, on a boat. From this tall, I was yeah. on a boat. All of our old timers have gone, and even the generation behind them have, have almost gone. We're 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 slowly starting to see that we're fixing to be the old timer in ten more years. The guy Pete Smith told some of the funniest. Uh, one one of the stories is about getting hit with a lightning bolt. What a dude! Hit with dude remembers bolt in the chest. And one of the stories, a tornado picked him up and set him down in a in a some some lady swimming pool over there off of Merrill Road. Uh, well, the, light, the lightning bolt, that was a good story because it went, hit him and almost knocked him down. He was, he was a, a friend to everybody. He was a friend to everybody. He was a great fisherman. He was a great crabber. He was he was great with the gill nets back in those days. Um, and like I say, he was always going to stretch a fishing line. Uh, there was a story about getting hit in the back with a pelican or something one time. He could come up with some stories, but he would never say anything bad about a fellow man. Never. You'd never hear him say a bad word about anybody. That was Trout River Fish Company owner Bruce Nipper and Robin Dude Emmett at the fish market near downtown Jacksonville. This segment was produced by WJCT's Mary McIntyre from an interview recorded by the Florida Department of State. Next, we travel to Palatka in Putnam County. Craig McLean works for the St. John's River Water Management District, and in his spare time, he works on getting trails built to connect more visitors to the river. He talked to former Florida folklorist Blaine Wade. Where's the role of trails in, in helping revitalize the river, the use of the river, too, or change the use of the river, even? Uh, to a degree, to access, um, helping folks uh, maybe see it and appreciate it a little more. Not everybody has the same type of access with a motorboat or a yacht, so these trails and even the trails that sometimes we don't think of as trails but would be like uh, scenic highways. Uh, there's some work going on right now on the St. John's River from the mouth to the headwaters uh, related to ecotourism and, and some of that is simply integrated maps showing people how they navigate downstream where they can stay, where they can camp, where the hotels are, where the restaurants are. Yeah, two of the points I've heard a lot about the river, I was talking to a guy who, up in Jacksonville who grew up on the river, and now he has a fish market, seafood market up there. He said one of the big changes he's seen about the river is access, that when he grew up, he could just get to the river. And then Belleville has talked to me about how, with the, you know, when, when people use the river as a primary means of transportation, there's a different relationship, but with the advent of railroads and interstates, it became something you drove over. Exactly. And then, so there's that issue of what you just touched on access, and then people sort of take it for granted. Exactly. I think that's definitely true because you know at one point in time, rivers were, uh, and with railroad, were our navigational channels in the state of Florida, and you could you could um, take a river boat up the St. Johns River, up the Ockawaha River, up into Lake County, right? Um, and it would bring citrus all the way back down that system. Well, you know at this point, you know you can navigate that system, but it doesn't doesn't carry uh, commerce and nor does it carry commercial paying passengers like it wants to do with river boats mm. but you so you think by building trails and doing some of the things that are happening down here it, it brings people closer to the river yeah, i think it would bring people closer to the river and give them more interaction and with some of the what i call uh, intermodal aspects like the train station and the river boat that the city's uh, getting ready to launch that will give people more of a interaction with the river because it's different ways they can get on to the river. There's a social and cultural aspects of trails that bring people out. People can so be socially involved. They can meet one another. It's a little bit, you know, it's a slower paced environment. You know, you know, we out enjoying the trail, riding on it, exercising, or using it to get to work or to the store. 
it's just a it's an opportunity folks have to um, engage with one another sort of slow down a little bit in the lifestyle and take a moment and say hello and see how everybody's doing um, so there's a definitely a social and a cultural aspect that i i really like that was Craig McLean talking near the banks of the St. John's River in Palatka. This segment was produced by WJCT's Mary McIntyre from an interview recorded by the Florida Department of State. And finally, our journey up the St. John's River takes us half an hour south to Crescent City. There, Edith Salazar and her mother Margarita are getting ready for the celebration of the Day of the Virgin of Guadalupe. The Salazars are from Mexico, and on this day, Margarita is cutting out paper decorations using a method called papel picado. It's about the story. The song is about her story, um, but um, usually the serenade talks about how do they find her, how much we love her, how much do she means to us. Is what your um your family, your mom, your grandma, your great grandma teach you, and um they can since they can give you like nothing else. They that's the only thing that they leave you your traditions. That's why it's so important to keep your traditions with you. Why people visit our house because they like our tradition of the day. She um, feels she feels so happy and so glad that they go and see our tradition because she says uh, for some of them um, they don't see us they see us different and she likes them to go because she feels like whoever goes they think that we're not different from the other people we're the same even though we're like from different country or different color or different culture. When we used to live in Mexico and we're, now that we're living here, we, ha- we carry the same traditions and we haven't changed nothing. So she's like, it's just mostly the same. And she's really happy about it because even though we're in a different country, we can continue like, you know, uh, doing our traditions and celebrating our traditions. And she, when they go and visit, she doesn't know if they just go just to, you know, see what is going on or they really go to see what we do. Some of people in the community ask her to do the papel picado for a different occasions. Yeah, so she just doing it for fun and because she likes to do it. Because she understands and some people doesn't know how to do it. And, you know, some people charge to do, like, decorations for different occasions. And she does, does it because um, she doesn't want to get a range. You know, like, if you don't know, she would really like to, like, help you out and teach you how to do it and do it for you. But uh, she doesn't like to charge or nothing like that. She just like doing it because of um, she likes to do it. De Nueva España, soy mexicana, vengo a dejarles mi corazón. That was Edith and Margarita Salazar at their home in Crescent City. This segment was produced by WJCT's Mary McIntyre from an interview recorded by the Florida Department of State.